Our objective is to prove the Jordan Holder theorem and the path that we'll take towards the Jordan Holder theorem is via a theorem called Schreier's theorem, which is a very general theorem with no assumptions on um, the ring R whose modules we are considering. So let's uh, look at Schreier's theorem. So firstly, before we do that, I need to make one more definition uh, about the equivalence of two composition series. So two composition series Let's say uh, the first one is m i i goes from 0 to m and the second one n j j goes from 0 to n are said to be equivalent well, basically if their quotients are the same more precisely if firstly m is equal to n and secondly, there exists a permutation let's call it sigma from the set uh, 0 to m minus 1 to the set 0 to n minus 1 such that the quotient corresponding to i, let's say m i mod m i plus 1 is isomorphic to the quotient corresponding to sigma i in the second composition series. So n sigma i mod n sigma i plus 1 for each i in 1 to in the range of 1 to um, m minus 1. Okay, so two composition series are equivalent if their uh, quotients are the same. So last time we had looked at an example of uh, composition series, we started with uh, the ring uh, R to be Z and we looked at the R module uh, M equals Z mod 12 Z. And uh, we had listed firstly all the sub modules of this module and then using that we had also listed the composition series. And uh, in red here, I have uh, also the uh, quotients uh, listed. Uh, the integer i means I'm looking at z mod i z as the quotient. So um, there was a, a small mistake here. This 2 and 6 need to be interchanged. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it. This is 6 and this is 2. Okay. So now if you see, um, all these three things here in the last, uh, these are equivalent. This is equivalent to this, this is equivalent to this, because there are three quotients, two of them are Z mod 2 and one of them is Z mod 3. So you can permute them, permute these things and get these. But over here, what we have is that this is equivalent to this and um, these two, this composition series is equivalent to this composition series. Okay, so we have two equivalence classes uh, for composition series with n equals 2 and we have a single equivalence class uh, with composition series uh, with n equals 3. In fact, this last thing that all the composition series of the longest length, uh, which turn out to be Jordan Holder series, are all equivalent is the Jordan Holder theorem. Okay, but in any case, what you see here is that uh, given any two series, uh, com uh, composition series there is uh, for example you could take 2 comma 6 and for uh, these two series this is a common refinement uh, whereas if you take this series and this series the first and third in the second row that is m contains 2m contains 0 and m contains 3m contains 0 they do not have a common refinement however they both have refinements which are um, equivalent and that's basically uh, the content of Shire's theorem. So let's state Shire's theorem. Any two composition series C 
sigma 1 and sigma 2 of an R module M admit refinements let's call them sigma 1 prime and sigma 2 prime uh, that means sigma 1 prime is a refinement of uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 prime is a refinement of sigma 2 so let's write respectively uh, such that that are equivalent and we saw how this works in the example of z mod 12. The proof of Schreier's theorem uh, rests upon a very simple idea. So uh, let's get let me explain the idea to you. So firstly, let's give these um, uh, composition series names. So we have, um, let's say, sigma 1 is just the series um, mi, i goes from 0 to m. And let's say sigma 2 is the series um, nj, j goes from 0 to n. Now the idea behind the proof is use sigma 2 to define sigma 1 and use sigma 1 to define sigma 2. So these will give rise to refinements sigma 1 prime and sigma 2 prime and we will show that uh, these refinements are actually uh, equivalent. So how do we do this? So let's start with firstly um, refining sigma 1 using sigma 2. Okay, so, so let's start with uh, sigma 2 itself. So sigma 2 is this thing. So you start um, uh, n0 is m. and then that contains n1, that contains and so on, all the way down to nn, which is equal to zero. Okay, now let's take this and intersect it with mi. So I get mi is equal to mi intersect n0, which contains mi intersect n1, all the way to mi intersect nn, which is zero. But this is not what I want. I don't want to go uh, refine, I want to refine the uh, sigma one, which is the m's. So I don't want to end up at zero here. I want to end up at mi plus one. So what I'll do is I'll add mi plus one to each of these things. So the next step is uh, we have mi, but let's just add mi plus 1 to all these modules. So this is the same as mi plus 1 plus mi intersect n0 and that contains mi plus 1 plus mi intersect n1 and so on. And finally we have mi plus 1 plus mi intersect nn. Okay and this last term is equal to mi plus 1. Now in this uh, refinement, it's quite possible. Uh, so this, this is actually a refinement of M. Let me write it down more explicitly. But it's quite possible that many of these terms here are going to coincide with each other. There'll be no change between uh, this module here and the next module. It's quite possible that that will often happen. So we are not talking about strict uh, Jordan holders, uh, strict uh, composition series here. We're just talking about composition series where terms are allowed to repeat. So finally, what we get is uh, the uh, composition series sigma 1 prime. So sigma 1 prime, uh, let's just say, let sigma 1 prime be the composition series. So 
so um, given by m i j equal to um, m i plus 1 plus m i intersect n j so what we write is so first we start with um, um, m equal to m zero zero and that contains m zero one that contains m zero two so here now j is changing as we had in each row of this um, this this uh, here right so j is changing j is changing as we had in each row over here and this goes all the way up to m uh, 0 n and this is equal to um, m 1 okay and so that's again uh, we, we could go on now to the next terms uh, which is uh, so m 1 is still equal to m uh, 1 0 which contains m 1 1 which contains m 1 2 and so on which goes down to m 1 n which is now equal to m 2 and this is equal to m 2 0 and so on and finally we'll end up with um, all the way down to m m n which is 0 so this sigma 1 is this composition series given by this and we have two indices uh, we take i goes from uh, 1 to n and j goes from uh, 1 to m, uh, 0 to m. i goes from 0 to n and j goes from 0 to, i goes from 0 to m and j goes from 0 to n. First, uh, running the index is j within each index i. So this is, I hope it's clear what sigma 1 prime is. And this is clearly a refinement of sigma 1 because I have the terms of sigma 1 in it. These things, m1, m2, and this is actually mn. Okay, and in the same, in a similar manner, we will refine, um, uh, we will refine sigma 2 using sigma 1. So now we'll refine sigma 2 using sigma 1. Let me just do it again just to give, get, give you the hang of it. So what we are starting with is the filtration sigma 1. So that is given by uh, m equals m0 contains m1 contains all the way up to mm which is equal to 0 and then what we'll do is we'll intersect it with um, um, nj so what we get is nj equals um, m0 intersect nj contains m1 intersect nj contains mm intersect nj and this is still 0 and now let's add nj plus 1 to each term of this series. So we get nj equals um, nj plus 1 plus m0 intersect nj. This contains nj plus 1 plus m1 intersect nj and so on. And here we have uh, nj plus 1 plus m m intersect nj and this is equal to uh, nj plus 1. So what we have is a new uh, composition series uh, which we will call uh, sigma 2 prime. So sigma 2 prime just like we had sigma 1 prime it's the composition series given by Uh, we'll call it nij equal to um, nj plus 1 plus 
m i intersect n j. And now we first run over the index j and within that we run over the index i. So 0 less than or equal to j less than or equal to uh, n minus 1, 0 less than or equal to i less than or equal to m minus 1. More explicitly what we are looking at is um, the composition series um, so we start with uh, um, m which is equal to n 0 0 which contains n uh, 1 0 which contains n 2 0 so the indexing the order of the indexing here is reversed And this is equal to n1. And then this is the same as n01, which contains n11, which contains n21, which contains, oops, this should be an n. M1 this is n2 and so on all the way down to n m n which is n n which is 0. So this is a refinement of the composition series sigma 2. Now let's see what the quotients of these two series are. So the quotients of um, sigma 1 prime are, well there are some zeros uh, but the remaining are uh, of the form um, qij equal to mi intersect nj plus mi plus 1 that's the ijth term of um, of the series sigma 1 prime and then we must increase uh, j by 1 because in this the variable j the index j is running inside the index i and so we have m i intersect n j plus 1 plus m i plus 1 and those of sigma 2 prime are q prime i j equal to or maybe I'll call it uh, well should be Maybe I'll call this Q1 and I'll call this Q2. Yeah, that makes more sense. And these are um, MI intersect NJ plus um, NJ plus 1 modulo uh, MI plus 1 intersect NJ plus NJ plus 1. So these are the portions of the two refinements that uh, we have constructed. The situation looks something like this. So the four, uh, there are four relevant uh, R modules in this. So um, just a schematic picture. You have um, M I intersect N J. This contains two sub modules. Um, M I intersect N J plus one and um, M I plus one intersect nj and then we have here the smallest module which is contained in all these which is mi plus 1 intersect nj plus 1. Now it turns out that both these portions are coming uh, from this picture. What they capture is actually uh, you take this module mi intersect nj and you go modulo everything that comes from here. So, so let me just uh, make that statement so lemma is that uh, there exist isomorphisms which I will construct in the proof uh, so we have um, this stuff on top mi intersection nj modulo everything that's below it which means I must take mi intersect nj plus 1 plus 
mi plus 1 intersect nj. This quotient is isomorphic to both the qij, q1ij and q2ij. So this is isomorphic to on the one hand um, uh, this guy And on the other hand, this guy. Okay, and let's see how to prove this lemma. This is fairly uh, straightforward exercise. So, um, so proof of lemma. What you do is, uh, you, let's try to define uh, let's try to define an isomorphism for the um, uh, modules on the left, and the other one will be quite similar, just interchanging the roles of m, n, i, and j, the role of m with n and the role of i with j. So what you do is, uh, you you have uh, m i intersect n j. So let let's define. So so we have what we have m i intersect n j. And this is a submodule of uh, mi intersect nj plus mi plus 1. But that has a surjective map onto the quotient module mm, mi intersect nj plus mi plus 1 mod uh, mi intersect nj plus 1 plus mi plus 1. So this is the quotient map, this is the inclusion map, and uh, let phi be the composition of these two. So we'll call this phi. And this phi will give rise to the isomorphism that we desire. We just need to check now all these things. So then what is the kernel of phi? The kernel of phi is uh, all those things in m i intersect n j, which also happen to be in uh, in in this denominator here. And this you can show without too much difficulty that this is isomorphic to and I leave it as an exercise for you that this is isomorphic to um, m i plus 1 intersect n j plus m i intersect n j plus 1. And so phi induces an injective homomorphism. phi bar from uh, m i intersect n j mod m i intersect n j plus 1 plus m i plus 1 intersect n j onto m i intersect n j plus m j uh, m i plus 1 modulo you know this thing here. So that is injective and now we only need to check that phi bar is surjective. The image of phi bar is um, uh, so, so phi bar is surjective just because so uh, phi goes on to this, the, the image of phi bar is the image of phi, okay. So, um, so uh, we need to check that this is contained in the image of this. But the point is that m i plus 1 plus m i intersect n j is contained in 
एम आई इंटरसेक्ट एन जे प्लस एम आई प्लस वन प्लस एम आई इंटरसेक्ट एन जे प्लस वन एंड सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस फी बार विल बी सब्जेक्टिव बिकॉज यू गोन गेट एवरीथिंग ओवर हियर मॉड्यूल ऑफ दिस इन द इमेज ऑफ फी इनफैक्ट वॉट दिस शोज इज दैट फी इज सब्जेक्टिव एंड देर फोर फी बार इज सब्जेक्टिव So what we have shown is that uh, this thing, these two modules on the left are isomorphic, and as I said before, by interchanging the role of M with the role of N and the role of I with the role of J, you can prove that these two modules on the right here are also isomorphic. And so we have Q1 I J is isomorphic to Q2 I J for all. I less than or equal to um, m minus one, and then the remaining portions are just zero because you know the last uh, module in the composition series in each row is the first module on the right, and so what we have is um, you can you can just remove those by merging those terms. Therefore, sigma one prime. And sigma two prime are equivalent, completing the proof of Schreier's theorem. And uh, let me emphasize again that uh, in Schreier's theorem, there is no hypothesis. Uh, when we prove the Jordan-Holder theorem, we will need. Um, we will need uh, a hypothesis about the ring r or about the modules um, m and n here this is a completely general theorem so you can even look at rings uh, uh, where uh, uh, the composition series are finite but the rings can admit uh, infinite composition series like z so if you have any two finite composition series of z uh, they will admit Um, we are always taking composition series to be finite. That's how we defined it. They will admit a common refinement, and not only does it say that uh, such a common refinement exists, the proof that we've given of Schreier's theorem actually shows you how to construct this common refinement.